hit it in about the same spot. Hit it right about here, right over the ballistics gelatin. Uh, no cut through. And yes, a lot of people would say outright that this is a piece of costume. Well, to be honest, uh, it pretty much is. It's very much, uh, this was sent to us by Medical Shop Australia. Uh, is really leather. It has real bronze fittings. Uh, and it's beautiful. It's the Royal Lion's Head uh, Greek belt from Medieval Shop. Do we see pictures in like Etruscan art, early, early period, where it could have been Bronze Age swords, and it was Bronze Age weapons like I tested in the first video? Why, yes, we did. Uh, we see stuff that looks similar to this. Do we know what it's made out of? For all we know, we could have little metal plates riveted in it, uh, you know, like bronze inside of it, which I doubt it because that type of uh, lamination wasn't common. It could be leather. Uh, it could be part of the lenothorax because the lenothorax shows pieces at the bottom like this. A lot of times it looks as if there are pieces in between these pieces uh, as a double layer of uh, tacit style uh, uh, strips that are hanging. Uh, a lot of times they don't hang very far down. Sometimes they look like they hang lower. The whole thing is, to me, it seems like the piece of the body that's hard to protect, like the waist and the thigh, is what they seem to be helping to aid in protecting. So whether it was actually gambus in a quilted cloth, or whether it was uh, all hardened leather or some kind of uh, really thick leather that was slightly flexible, or what have you, uh, apparently this light of leather with a light padding behind it and some uh, cloth behind it, a couple of layers of... Uh, uh, coarse, tightly woven linen cloth stopped it. And, and this alone would stop the edge. And somebody said if I used an iron edge, which I have an iron blade here that we uh, were told by Barry Jacobson to try out uh, for our video. This is about the right length for the Spartan arrow, like they're 300 and stuff. This is the length that they use, and it's more of a hacking blade, a thrusting blade, that it would uh, you know, pierce it if we used uh, iron instead of bronze. From my experience, hammered uh, bronze, the actual edge if it's done properly, is harder than uh, mild steel or wrought iron, or uh, early wrought iron. This and we got the same result. I get across the ballistics shelter and in the cloth without a single cut, just like I had said before. And this is extremely sharp. I can shave with it. And yes, this is our iron sword that we used in some videos. Yes, it's quite sharp for some iron swords, but it was a special design for uh, around the time period of Leonidas when they were fighting the actual Persians. So uh, this blade here is great for thrusting. Uh, we'll try that in a second. Uh, but I don't think it's going to go through that layer of cloth with the next one. This blade can be used for casting, and as you see, I cut through the material with the tip of the blade, and we cut into the ballistic shell. So, would this be a really bad wound? Uh, it appears about an inch deep. I cut towards the edge, so I didn't get it right in the center like I wanted. I could have probably got a little deeper as it trailed through, but this ran off the edge of the thigh, be like hitting your thigh and cutting through. So without a tip shot, this could not make it through two layers of this material. And this is just cloth. So even if you had cloth uh, tacits and they were part of the little thorax and there were multiple layers of cloth quilted together, uh, with a conventional slice, it would not go through. The only thing that would happen is if a tip shot hit it, which is very akin to a thrust to a high speed cut. And yes, these type of swords could have been used that way by being cast out because they're very heavy, the leaf shape. Uh, like we come up with the uh, Ewart Park and the uh, Wilberton. We decided that they were used that way. Uh, yeah, we got a pretty decent cut. That one was unable to make it through, but we still slightly cut in the ballistic gel. And what happened there is the cloth moved. This is free flowing cloth. And the actual cloth itself did not cut deep, but I would say about a good uh, eighth of an inch or something into the gel. That would be a rip or a tear in your skin. That would be like when you get scratched on something badly when you're running for the woods or something and you got caught on a uh, tree branch and it gouges you. That was from the cloth itself. It not cut. And that was from the tip. Oh. Now what happened here is I stopped. This basically hit the uh, bronze. It sliced into it. It sliced into it slightly into the bronze glanced off the leather and hit the side. So this might have nicked the leg. 
But even though I was stabbing straight into the leg to go into the gel, this piece of metal that most people would say is just decorative, which it is, and this is a modern belt. This is something to copy what you see in the movies. Uh, you can watch a movie that has a Greek motif and you will see it. Uh, you watch a Roman movie with gladiators and you'll see these type of things hanging from Yes, there, there, there are modern representations of armamentation, but it still worked. The, the actual artwork on here, the design, the little bronze pieces that help weight it down and flap it too much, uh, actually turn the blade. So it means they are effective to that degree even against the thrust. I know this is a light blade, but it shows that it might help you. So you better than nothing, even if this was something that's a prestigious or uh, ornamental thing to wear, or uh, traditional, it still has serves a function. That was, I think, the main purpose to our video. We get sent stuff like this, and it is not a, uh, you know, like traditional historical piece that we can document, but it is similar. So therefore, we still test it, and that's why I want to test it so badly to see if it had any effect. Oh. And that's what you get, the same thing we got yesterday, all the way into the mannequin and through all that gel without any type of protection. And that is a substantial cut that would make it all the way to the bottom. So anyway, I hope I did what the viewers requested. We have people saying they wanted to see an actual iron sword from the time period, which this is very much like what they would have at that time period, and it's equal to iron. I can attest to this, it damages just as easily, it is iron. Um, it's not a, a steel hard plate, it's just thick. It's a lenticular design to keep it from uh, bending. So anyway, uh, like I said, especially designed for our video, we did the spark video. Uh, had the same results today. We had an unusual result with this big wide tip. The actual uh, ornamentation is what most people consider it, but the stud stopped it. And like I said, yes, this is very much like you've seen a beer series or something like that. A lot of people watch Gladiator out there. Uh, and yes, it would serve some function if you got hit with a slice, a conventional slice or a thrust even possibly that had something on it like that, it might save your life. Would that be a primary defense? Probably not. But I mean, why not wear it if you had it? Anyway, hope you enjoyed it, and Farvel. I'm sorry, we do know about the window shoes. We can't stop the window. Bye.